Hello together. In the last video, we built up a mesh network with OpenThread and Zephyr. We sent one UDP packet from one device to another device using the command line interface. Uh, for playing a little bit around and testing is already quite nice, but uh, for programming our own network, it's actually quite useless since we uh, need to be able to send data from one node to another uh, via the API. <coughs> And in the last video, I promised you already that we will do this in this video using the AD API and sending a an UDP packet from one node to another. Um, we will have this scenario. We are having node 1 and node 2. And the node 1 will be the sender in our example and the node 2 the receiver. A UDP send um, consists on a IPv6 address uh, where we send the packet and the port number, so a socket where we send uh, the packet. Um, we uh, use the port 2222 and node 2. And since we don't know the IP uh, v6 address in front from the node 2, we will use in this example the broadcast address. Yeah? The broadcast address FF03 and then two colons and one. And uh, we're starting with the example from the last time. We're making a copy. So all the parameters are already set for open thread, the so configuration files, and uh, so on. We're in, uh, starting with the sender and uh, call it uh, UDP send example. Don't forget to delete the build configuration. Then we're starting Visual Studio and adding the application. And after adding it, we have to compile it. And this, of course, takes again a little bit. Um, now we can start with the implementation. Um, for this, we are needing the source file, the project file, and so on. We let it uh, like in the last example. We don't have to uh, exchange here something, uh, and also the overlay file. Yeah, we are just uh, need to adjust the main file. And the first thing what we have to do is, of course, to include a few libraries from OpenThread. Yeah, I will use here three, uh, OpenThread.h, uh, Thread.h, and UDP.h. Uh, and um, we will uh, implement also a button. Uh, the button we will, when the button is pressed, we will then send a UDP package. So for this, I'm defining the node for a button, like we know from the examples before. Get the button uh, specification from the device tree, and also implement the callback function from the button. Uh, so the so callback function makes an UDP send. So we will uh, implement the UDP send in a few uh, seconds. Um, we have still to activate the button in the main function. Yes, as we know already from the button example, so we configure the GPIO yeah, as input, then we configure the uh, interrupt and uh, in its a callback function and adding the callback function. Now the button is implemented and we will uh, start to implement the UDP send function. So UDP send um, is a little bit longer, but actually not so complicated. First, uh, we define an OT error. Um, if there is an error later, then we're starting with uh, OT error none. Yeah, so open thread error. Then we define our text what we want to send. I use here hello thread in this example. Uh, we always need when we uh, have to do something in instance from 
for OT, um, so open, th uh, open thread instance. So we get this with uh, so command open thread get default instance. This is um, the thread instance which we um, starting with the uh, configuration parameter. Yeah? So uh, then we having our instance and for every UDP communication we need also a UDP socket. Um, we don't have to initialize here something. Um, this will be uh, after we are sending something will be filled with information, but we don't need them actually. Uh, but we need the socket. Then uh, we needing a data structure from the format OT message info. There will be uh, the information where the message will be sent uh, inside. Yeah. So we initialize it here first always zero. Yeah, mem set <coughs> message info and the size of the message info all filled with zero. And then we store in the field MP address or the destination address. Um, we will store there the broadcast address um, uh, for the destination, so the broadcast address, and using the function OT IP6 address from string. So we can use here the short string for it and getting then the IP address set this field. Then we're setting the port, uh, the destination port. We are using 2222 and uh, then we're starting already uh, the communication. Uh, so, um, so we uh, make a do-while loop again for error handling. So we are starting in UDP open and there uh, we initialize it with the instance and the socket. And normally when we uh, want to receive something, we have to set here also the callback function. But uh, since we are sending here only, uh, we fill uh, the second uh, the field 3 and field 4 with null. Then we're making error checking. If there's no error, we're going on. Then we're create a, creating a new test message with the command OT UDP new message. Um, we give again our, our OT instance uh, for this and after this we are appending a message and um, we are appending of course our char error which we defined before. Yeah? So with the length of the array and if this went well then we are sending the package and uh, the command OT UDP send taking again the instance, the socket, the test message and the message info where the address and so on is stored. And after this we are closing the UDP uh, connection again. If there was an, uh, no error we are just print out send and if there is an error we are printing out the error code. So we compile this uh, again. This can take a few seconds, minutes, but not so long like a new compiling. And then we transfer it to our device one. Since UDP is a connectionless um, protocol, we don't need a receiver for testing this. We will directly start for testing this here. So we connect to our device. Um, and uh, yeah, you're seeing here our prompt, but we don't have to put here something inside. If I hit now the button from device one, uh, let's see here, device one, we see is that here is a send command. Yeah, so we are sending something out, and I also plug in a sniffer stick, and uh, you see here this Wireshark. And I push the button, then uh, we receiving here um, the message. You appear. The destination port is two thousand two hundred twenty-two. Um, 
and the text is hello thread. Our source part um, is always counted one up, yeah. So it started here with for forty nine thousand one hundred fifty eight, and when I make the next one, will be a fifty nine. And since this is a broadcast, it's always sent four times, yeah. Now we needing, of course, also a receiver. Um, for this, I close Visual Studio again, and um, we make uh, another copy here from the last example, from the my thread CLI example, or also from the UDP send. It doesn't matter actually, and call it then. UDP receive example delete the build again starting Visual Studio adding the project and creating the build. For the receiver, we open again the main function. Uh, so from selected, so <laughs> we are checking it always twice. So, so UDP ex, uh, receive example, the main, yeah, it's, it's empty. Um, we have also to uh, uh, define, uh, to include the same libraries. Then uh, the first thing what we have to do is to uh, implement a callback function. So callback function is a function which is called when uh, data is re received. Yeah, uh, using three parameter uh, here. Um, the so first is uh, context, this is a user-defined context, it's mostly not, uh, not used. Then the message and the message info. And we want just to give out the message what we receive. So we uh, calculate the payload length. Uh, this we are doing with um, the command OT, OT message get length. Uh, minus OT message get offset. So then we're getting the length of the payload. Then we creating a buffer uh, variable, a char area from this size uh, plus one, since we want to uh, make it as char array, and we are using the terminal sign zero at the end, yeah, slash zero. Um, the rest we filling up before with the command ot message read. Uh, with the message, the offset, the buffer where we store it, and the payload length. And then we just print out the message. In the next step, we are uh, initialize. You know it, maybe you remember it from the command line interface. We have to open the UDP port and also bind, um, making a bind to the uh, port. So um, again, we're defining an error before for error handling. Then we're getting an instance, an OT, open thread instance. We are creating a socket. Um, and for this, we are needing also a socket address and uh, defining a variable from OT socket address. We are fill it with zero at the beginning and setting the port address from our socket um, to 2222. After this again, we are doing our do while loop for error handling, and um, we open the UDP port, parameter my instance, uh, and the socket, and here we are using the callback function, which we defined here before. Yeah? So this means this callback function will be used when um, will be called when uh, something arrived to this socket, which we defined here. 
Then we're making a um, UDP bind, uh, same procedure, except we are using here also again my socket and the socket address which we defined here before. Yeah? Uh, so third parameter you can here choose if it's only in our threat network, the destination, or if it's in the cloud or something. So the most common would be macro which is used here is probably OT net interface thread. I think, what's the other one called? Uh, yeah, backbone or unspecified, yeah, what we are using here, thread. Um, and afterwards, if there's an error, we are printing out this, there's an error, and if not, everything is fine. And in the main, we just have to um, in it, uh, UDP in it, we have to call the function. And this is actually all. So we compile this. Transfer to our second device. Um, using arrays when you are not sure before, yeah, then um, I use this device already with the parameter before. Don't forget to use arrays, um, uh, arrays and flash um, when you did use other parameters, such as boards getting the right parameters, yeah, which we set in the configuration. So now we are needing to put here for checking our message, so COM port 1, uh, COM port 3 is the first one, and COM port 4 is the second one. And uh, when I push now the button here on the board 1, you're seeing set something sent, and on the um, Com4 on the second device, we're getting the received, the hello thread. This was a UDP example over the API, so it's already nice that we can build up our own mesh network with Safia and open thread and uh, sending data from one device to another. So we could also already program our own application. So this is not the most convenient way, there are better solutions. Uh, one, of course, is Core App. Um, how we will do this with Core App, we will then learn in the next video. I hope you liked the video and it was helpful. Don't forget to push the like button and see you in the next video.